Hey everyone, this is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. I'm super stoked you're joining me for this review because it's unlike any other Nikon D5 review you're going to see out there. We're looking specifically at the video shooting capabilities of this camera. Now, do I think you're going to run out there and go purchase this camera or you already own this camera because you just want to shoot video with it? Probably not. I think you're going to want to buy this camera because you want the top of the line Nikon camera for professional photography. And wow, it's a full frame camera that also shoots 4K UHD video. So are the video capabilities of this camera up to snuff? We're going to find out right now. So when you look at it, this is a beast of a camera and the grips themselves are incredibly comfortable. I didn't actually feel like this camera was too big in any capacity. I thought that all the button placements and the grip itself were extremely comfortable. When you purchase the D5, you have two options to choose between. You can get the CF card version or you can get the XQD version. I suggest the XQD version. There is zero lag, zero problems shooting 4K video. I really like that the camera has a touch screen. I like that you can um, flick through your, your images and also do pinch zoom to zoom in on a part of your image. I just wish that the touch capabilities on the LCD also worked when you're filming, but also some people might not like that because it's too easy to set something accidentally. The camera is built in HDMI. This is a clean HDMI out feed that outputs 4K video. We have a standard 3.5 mic jack and a headphone jack, and there is a USB and a network cable if you want to shoot tethered. Comes with a big ass battery that is um, the same as the Nikon D4. The battery life on this camera is insanely good. It's so good for shooting video and it's really excellent for taking photos. It just lasts forever. You can change your aperture on the Nikon D5 when you're in live view mode when shooting video. So don't worry about that. That is a non-issue. And Nikon adds another feature to their camera, which is called aperture priority mode. And that allows the two front buttons to change your aperture in a much smoother capacity. And here's a demonstration of it. One cookie. Okay, let's go have a cookie. A lot of Nikon cameras have a switch on their live view so you can go between photo live view and video live view. This is a really important feature because it allows you to take photos and have your settings set up for whatever photos you're taking, but be able to switch to the movie shooting mode and have different settings. I always suggest shooting video in manual mode and you wanna lock your shutter speed to double your frame rate. So there's a live histogram when you're shooting video and there's a grid display and you have the ability to also check your horizon line and make sure that your camera is level. You can change the sensitivity of the microphone if you wanna manually dial something in. Don't ever use auto white balance because of course, as you're moving throughout your scene, the white balance of the camera will shift and it'll look terrible in your video. So when you're shooting with this camera, you can use the modern, sharp, beautiful lenses that Nikon puts out, or you can use any other vintage lenses, which I personally prefer because they offer a little less contrast and some interesting lens flares and just kind of give some cool character to the camera. And specifically when shooting video, I find that the vintage lenses look a little more filmic. The other thing that impacts the look of the video is really your picture style. And I think it's something that people overlook. With video, you don't have the opportunity to shoot raw. So you want to make sure that you're dialing in a look that's going to give you the most latitude in post. And it really depends what you're going to be doing in post, if you're going to be editing it at all, or if you're just going to be putting it out to the internet. So we're looking at footage here. I'm at a Victoria Royals game, and this is the Western Conference. And basically it's the league, if you don't know, just below the NHL. So the players are really good and the games are really interesting to watch. Okay, let's start by looking at the standard picture style. And this is the picture style that the camera is set to when you first buy it. And as you can see, 
good contrast, you know, very white whites, but there's not a lot of dynamic range in the image that I can see. And it's one of the reasons I don't ever shoot with the standard picture style when I'm shooting video. Vivid is just surreal, super contrasty. The flat picture style is the picture style that Nikon has created to get the most dynamic range out of the camera. And it gives you the opportunity to take it into post and then do your own color correction on it. Almost 100% of the time when I'm shooting video with a Nikon DSLR, I have my camera set to the neutral picture style. It's just less contrasty, less sharpness. You can always add sharpness in post. All right, let's talk about autofocus. It's one of the constant questions I get on all my videos. Kelly, why didn't you show the autofocus? Let's talk about the autofocus. I want to see the autofocus. I want to tell you right now, I don't ever use autofocus when I'm shooting video. Autofocus has never been great in video. It just hasn't. There's some cameras that are better at it than others. But my issue with it is, how does the camera know what I want to be in focus? That's why I use manual focus. I zoom in using the zoom button. I use the LCD. I make sure it's in focus and then I hit record. But you know what? You guys always want to talk about autofocus, so let's talk about autofocus. This is probably the worst scenario for this camera as far as autofocus goes because there's so many people on the ice. It doesn't know which object has the puck. It doesn't know anything. And that's why you want to use manual mode. This is uh, an example of autofocus a point that is constant, so it's tracking. So it's, it, it's using contrast detection to track. So now we're looking at autofocus that's continuous, but we're looking at the wide setting. So it's looking at a wider area and it's trying to find the contrast in that area to focus on. Now this is single point autofocus and the difference here is it's not continuous. So you just press the shutter release down part way as if you're going to take someone's photo and then you focus on the part that you want to be in focus and then you leave it. This is another way to basically almost do manual focus, but you don't have to zoom in. You let the camera do it for you. You've got a mode dial on the left. You can click through basically the shutter settings, whether you want to have a single shot or multiple shot, or of course, 12 frames per second. So we're at a hockey game. What better place to try out the 12 frames per second photo shooting and 153 point autofocus system? I have to say, I was so impressed by the autofocus system. The camera is so accurate in autofocus when shooting photos. The Nikon D5 has a built-in intervalometer for shooting time-lapse. It also has a secondary time-lapse shooting menu. Instead of having to take all those photos and color correct them and everything and put them on a timeline in post and then create a time-lapse, it makes the time-lapse for you in the camera. Okay, so let's talk about frame rates you can shoot up to 30 minutes per clip at 4K UHD. So because this review is in 4K, I'm windowing the footage here. This is 1080p at 60 frames per second that I have then slowed down on a 24 frame per second timeline. And this is the most slow motion you're going to get out of the camera at 4K. This is a 29.97 clip on a gain 24 frame per second timeline. So there's a little bit of slow motion in this. It's just slightly higher speed than, than what my timeline is. So one of the coolest features about the D5 is that you can set 
the LCD screens on it so that they light up in the dark. And this is such a good feature for shooting in the dark because you can see all your settings and it looks so cool. Check this out. People love full frame sensors because they tend to be better in low light. I think to my eye, it doesn't have as much dynamic range as I'm used to seeing on some other Nikon cameras, but I think the video looks excellent. So the UHD is going to be about a 1.5 times crop of the actual width of the sensor because UHD is 3,840 pixels wide. And of course the sensor is wider than that, but it is a one-to-one -one readout. So you're not getting any artifacting from downscaling or anything like that. This camera can really handle low light shooting and I'm not surprised because it's a nice full frame sensor. So if you're looking for some more video footage from the D5, I shot two reviews with this camera. One was the iFootage mini crane review, and the other is the Red Raven review. The D5 does a pretty good job with Moray. You can see a little bit of a pattern on top of the bag, but otherwise it's pretty good. Rolling shutter is a whole other issue, and it's sad to report that there is quite a bit of jello effect. So if you're doing whip pans or a lot of handheld movements, you might see some of that uh, skewing of the image as you see here, specifically on the door frames. I don't know why this is a problem with the D5, because Nikon has basically solved this on so many other other bodies. So if I could wrap things up succinctly, I'd say this. If you already own this camera or you're considering buying it for photography, you're not going to be disappointed with the video shooting capabilities. I love that you have full manual control of everything. I love you can change aperture and live view. I love that it shoots 4K and that the 4K looks great. So thanks for joining me. I hope you got something out of this review. And if you like these kind of in-depth hands-on reviews, please subscribe to my channel so you don't forget I exist. Bye.